When I write ya All across the USC, Compton, Watts Bay to LA From on to California From valley to valley We represent that killer county So if you keeping it real on your side of your town You tune in to Gangsta Chronicles Gangsta Chronicles We gon' tell you how we go Pinocchio, we gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Oh. Gangsta Chronicles, this is not your average show. You're now tuned into the real MCA Big James and Big Steel. This is strictly from the streets. Hello. We represent the James. We'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Gangsta Chronicles podcast. And I'm with my homeboys. Big J. Yeah. Man, and tonight, man, we have a, um, I don't want to say special guest, man. We have a legend up in this motherfucker. 100. You know, DJ Battle Cat, man. You know, it, it ain't too many people that can say they span three decades and some shit, dog. Yes, indeed. You know, for so for, do you realize, dog, that you've been making music more than some of our listeners been alive, longer than some of our listeners been alive? I mean, I know now, but I can, I, I definitely haven't have that thought in mind from time to time, but I've just been appreciating the fact that <clears throat> that they they still passionate about what I do and they want to be involved and they want me to finish what I started so you know it gives me gasoline to keep going right you know because uh that's just what it is that's the vibe yeah and you know let me give them this proper introduction BC powder <laughs> you know what I'm saying BC powder official DJ battle cat I would hit the applause. I'm gonna put the little applause oh, effects yeah. in there. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah, throw the little applause effects in there, everything. Yeah, yeah. me and James yeah. want some applause too. Oh, shit. for sure, man. Come on. Yeah. For sure, yeah. for sure. Applause, for sure. applause. <laughs> applause this motherfucker up, then. Applause shit. all the way across the board. I, I yeah. got y'all. I got y'all. But it's, that's real shit, though. And that's one thing about Gangster Chronicles. We bring brothers on there, positive brothers. Mm. I'm talking about for real, for real. That's doing their thing. You got cats out there that say. You know, you come from here, you come from there, you'll never amount to nothing. Look at this table here. That's oh, bullshit. Man, that's crazy. You know, yeah. it's bullshit. Yeah. That reality, they gotta they gotta wake up because, you know, divine order is a beautiful thing once you understand what it is and your purpose, you know. So this is the kind of table I like to be at. Right. Yes, right. yes indeed. You know, especially you coming from the area that you come from, mm -hmm. you know, choices are limited. You could have easily became a victim to your circumstances around the community, oh, but you use your gifts and talents to elevate. Oh man, it wasn't even so much the darkness. I seen a lot of light that could have brought me in, you know, because I seen some guys from my from my soil, our neighborhood, you want to call it <clears throat> tribe. They was more they they was more like heroes in a sense, and I see that they still. Respected their they family, their mothers and fathers. So right. when I seen that, you know, and I seen the fun that they was having through the, the culture and the lifestyle of of, of doing their thing, it, it that was the part that drew drew me in. Mm -hmm. But you know, once you spend some time, a little bit more in depth with them, <clears throat> you see the other, other activities that go on. You know, you you know your curiosity. You know, if you ain't schooled right, you know you you could be drawn in. And you never know, and you don't you don't know what you, how you built. But some of it has been a blessing. Though. I ain't gonna lie to some of the gladiator school shit I done seen with how to you know be a stand up guy and don't let no one just walk over you and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know I done had a few homies on the block that was like, look, if you can't keep your own bike, we ain't gonna keep saving you. You know we gonna whoop your ass if you ain't uh, a stand up guy for your bike. You know what I'm saying we don't do all the captain save. We will be a big brother, but we. We can't do this all the time because that ain't our, our get down doing that all the time. We want to see some dudes who can stand on their own. So next time that situation came around, I just toughened up and just, you know, stood, 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 stood strong through the battle. And he ran off and I was able to go home with my fucking bike. Right. <laughs> That's right. I was way respected more that way. And I was like, cool. That was without me even being quartered on. But I was quartered on in their heart because they said right. that I had heart. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. It was all. It, I think it was all um, <clears throat> the path of of living where we grew up. Yes, uh, sir. As young kids, as young adolescents, you know, eleven, twelve, um, watching the big homies was was intriguing to it us really because was. I, that was our neighborhood heroes, so to speak. I mean, I know you were taught in school, you know, the Malcolms and the Martins, and get you a positive role model, but. 
you know, I looked at the big OGs as, and they was protecting the neighborhood, you know. Uh, some of them would school us into telling us what we should and shouldn't be doing or if we had sense enough to venture off in yeah. the yeah. music or do whatever. Yeah. A lot of the homies would tell us, you know, you should, you, you, that should be your thing. You know what I'm saying? I get it. You want to represent the neighborhood, but you got you have choices, you know, yeah. that a lot of dudes didn't have. So. Yeah. It, it, it like you said, it was sort of like a a, a, a a teaching lesson, or those were our heroes, so to speak. You kind of you 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 basically lucky because in the '60s, '70s, and the '80s, the the big homies were totally different than the big homies you had today. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Some of them that grew up in the '60s and '70s now, you know, them went off to prison, or you know, the crack area fucked us up, mm -hmm. and we lost a lot mm -hmm. of good. Big homies, but mm -hmm. back then, like my uncles, they were there to teach the little homies, mm -hmm. the little cats that wanted to hang around them. So in the backyard, they'd show you how to play basketball. They was they was teaching you if you if you don't know how to fight, then what, yep. you go home. You know, my cousins, the Duffies. If if I lost the fight over there on 84th and uh, San Pedro, the motherfuckers made me eat dirt. Mm. You got to fight. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But but in today, these kids, some of these dudes ain't never had a fight. Mm -hmm. Ain't never had to get down like that. And then, you know, the majority of them are bullies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They ain't never had a yeah. fight, and then here you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I seen yeah. that hands on, and, and uh, that's one thing that I didn't want to uh, uh, add to my repertoire, or my, or my personality, and, you know, being a young kid coming coming into a young adult, because I really didn't like <clears throat> the feeling afterwards, you know what right. I'm saying? It, it, it left an ugly feeling, and you know, you would go home flashing out on your brother or some, you know, or a family member behind it, you know, because they don't understand that that outside world, you know, it's like it is, and so you, you don't have no one to free me. For me, I was the oldest, so I still needed a big brother, even though I was the oldest. So, you know, a lot of my big brothers was the, the brothers on the block. Right. You know? So I, I right. get what you're saying. I appreciate right. that to the fullest. Yeah, exactly. You know, <clears throat> you've been making records for a long time, like I said before, right? You coming in the studio with a rapper nowadays, you coming in with a rapper. Do you already kind of have in your mind what you want to do with that artist when you come in? Uh, that depends on the relationship. Early on, uh, I didn't have, they didn't have any records out. You know, I was dealing with people who was raw and into it like I was. Mm -hmm. So, excuse me, all I had was this word of mouth, uh, sometimes of, of that invitation to, 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 to make music for, some, for someone. So when they get there, um, of course, I want to hear where they at if they got some previous work, you know, cassettes or something. Because that's when when the cassette days was. I would hear something, and if they didn't have the material, they was just raw on this bus, get out a cappella, or I will put an instrumental on. Being a DJ, <clears throat> I would put some instrumentals on and just just hear their skill set and bo voice, you know. And um, I would just go from there. And then uh, one thing about me with words, I always like to bring. The, the backdrop to words, you know, from watching movies, you know, television mm -hmm. and going to certain things and seeing people speak, or even growing up on records like The Last Poets and uh, Poets and The Watts Prophets, you know, uh, mom had that plan, so that I got a chance to uh, appreciate <clears throat> wordplay early on. So by the time this hip hop thing came, we talking about 80, 82, you know, um, I didn't really start getting down till about maybe, I want to say, uh, 80, 87, 88. So, but yeah, that, that's that's my initial thing, you know, it's just hearing a voice and then I just go for mine. Either they'll come with a specification, mm -hmm. if they really good with uh, hearing music, you know, knowing what they want, yeah, I got this sample. But that's, that's what the hip hop game was when it first started, you know. Um, so they will bring their little twelve inches or forty fives or cassettes, and I'll play. And you want you want to chop up? Yeah, I want this part right here. Chop it, loop it, and just uh, arrange it to their song, their their song structure, to their lyrics. And then next thing you know, we we rocking and rolling. Yeah, because one thing I noticed that you do really really well is, like, let's say you're making the track for eight. Mm -hmm. 
you specifying it to him, but you still got your signature Battle Cat sound. You can still tell that's a Battle Cat track. That's a BC Pounder yes. track. You know what I mean? I know what that's about. And uh, to get to it, you know, f- for those who are polished, I do, and already have a, a track record of, of good material out there. Of course, I listen to it because the thing mm-hmm. is, it's supposed to you're supposed to bring, bring things to the table where it feels like it's relevant, <laughs> but it's still new and it's and it's, and you putting their sound and your sound together so what i would do was incorporate uh certain instrumentation uh uh meaning that from their previous records i would incorporate some of it i know that like with eight he like jazz he like hip-hop he like r&b and he like funk so if you know to work with him i'll just make sure that i got maybe two or three of every genre so I won't I won't miss. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To cover the different temples and, and mood swing. He could be laid back and don't want uh a up uh, or, or energy jazz track. He might want a laid back jazz track. So I would do one mid temple smooth and one kind of up temple. Because that's what you're supposed to do. You gotta go outside the box. If he never been on something in another style in the vein that he likes that's that's what a producer needs to do to challenge someone and show diversity in their in their creativity. That's what really creates a longevity relationship with producers and and writers in this thing called you know entertainment. Exactly. Yeah, sure. My thing is producers who are crafted and know they work. Basically, you get producers sometimes who just throw you anything. But then there are producers who know the artists. Like I like 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 he said, I know what dog raps to. I know what eight raps to. So it ain't like you gotta like like the build a bear bullshit. Like let me try to figure out what he likes, or I'm gonna come to the studio with just all kind of shit. He already know the direction, so that's a good producer to me. Cause I don't have to sit up and tell a motherfucker like, well, uh, you should listen to this, or you should listen to this, or you should listen to that. Yeah. Then you'll kind of get my flavor. Good producers already know the artists they working with. So if off the gate, or if I'm working with this cat, I already know what type of beat to make him. You get me? Because mm-hmm. that's his track record. So yeah. just say you walking in the door, you would have ex- expectations of Battle Cat. You already know what he going to I, have, I would have expectations of he already know what I like. Yeah. So he ain't going to come with no shit that I'd be like, Oh, that's some shit that so and so will rap to, yeah, or right. that's something that that cat would rap to. And, and, Everything he probably walk, and and then it's like he said, it's good to be diverse. Yeah, let yeah. me try something different. Yeah, see if he like that. Yeah, you get me. Yeah, then but, he know that I ain't just one dimension. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm I'm coming with my bag because if his past relationships or anyone, you know, he still got his his relationship with his with his G's or you know, whoever he's getting down with, but sometimes when you live life, sometimes different things happen to you in the inside about your taste of music, and you be time. needing a sound that that is transparent with what you're feeling. So, it, you know, um, you mentioned a couple of things that was key. Now, with me being successful, I have had these talks with certain artists who really know music without composing it and challenge me and say, hey, Cat, you should get back in your bag, or let me give you this. Or if they'll say, "This is what I, what else I've been listening to," and I like that because they know I'm gonna know about it once I hear it because of my instrumentation. I'm a musician first, before the title of a beat maker. My my first passion is drums and percussion, then keys. So I understand rhythm all the way across. Plus, I used to pop lock, so I understand rhythm and dancing. And you know when you making music and you be and as you being a DJ, you know you really know how to captivate a, a crowd and an audience. And you must be open minded because when I wasn't open minded, I see where that got me. And but when I start opening my mind about the different audience, think uh, I think uh, uh, Greg Mack and uh, and Roger Clayton from Uncle Jam Zombie and K Day, by them being up on the both of those entities, it showed me a lot about how to not lose your crowd, your audience, you know? And so um, once I start understanding people as a young kid, 
they move swings, where they come from, and what they looking to do once they get in in, in a place like a club or or a house party. Your thing is is to build the momentum of of a good time, and so you must listen to records that can really captivate. And, and really move the crowd. You have a responsibility to command the audience and take them someplace where it feels like an adventure. So when they go back right. home, they're not really thinking about their problems. They really more motivated to do something about, you know, the, the situation at hand. And music does that. It really bring a lot of, you know, different views and uh perspectives where you you know you you're You'll have a better chance in life. You, you know, we heard it. Look, the Curtis Mayfields, you know, when those yeah, who say they yeah. live with this type of music, it's also a lifestyle that goes with the music. So you have a responsibility to be that. You know, if this is if this music is your, it's the soundtrack to your day, and whether you're going to pay a bill or going to see a girl or see a family member, you know, that music and the message in it can set the tone. And that's what I always understood early on as, as a kid being a musician to a world-renowned producer. And you was a DJ, too. Yeah. Because I noticed all the great producers are DJs as well. Mm-hmm. Even the ones that don't yeah. got DJ in front of their, you know, in front of they, in front of their name. Or you go back to the day and you find out that they did have a DJ at like, one like, time. Like, like when I got an inv- invitation to see Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis come to find out Jimmy Jam was a DJ first before he was a full-fledged mus- musician and it and it and it and it uh it made so much sense right. why his rhythms was like it like they were you know mm-hmm. sos band you know alexander o'neill sherelle right. or even with the rap uh 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 the homie from long beach bad times that exactly. did that one. yeah you know he did, oh, that's jimmy jam and terry lewis early on with hip-hop and, and r&b so you right and um uh, all the, the DJs that was in the uh, late seventies that I knew that was producers. Dre is one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Greg Royals, rest in peace. Uh, Sidney Thomas, DJ Reg, you know, Egyptian Lover, mm-hmm. Roger, them guys, uh, and then the rest of our crew. You know, the rest of my Katie Mix Masters are uh, end up being producers as well. Exactly. Joe Cooley, mm-hmm. uh, Ralph M, Trasky, Romeo, Jamin James. There's so many in the name, you know, and 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 it, it 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 pays. It paid off for us doing that. You know, we we had a sense of responsibility uh, getting into the production world. You know what I'm saying? Because we we was uh we was in demand. We needed music that was relevant to. Where us. we from? Our exactly. house, our backyard. Because we didn't have that. Yeah, our music was kind of all over the place before we found an identity. Some structure, yeah, yes, and indeed. purpose. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You know what I want to go back to? I want to go back like to the '80s. Oh wow. Okay, we gonna go back to like the late '80s, kind of right? Yes. You okay. remember the California Cat Crew? Right? Yes, I was a K Day Mix Master as well as a um, uh, California Cat Crew member, and. Um, what it was for me is because I always, always wanted to be a part of a crew because, like I said, I was the oldest. Mm-hmm. So if I was blessed to not have the hood, like eight would say, take me under, they really encouraged me to get out and do my thing. You know, I was already DJing their house parties and, and, and black tie affairs and all that type of stuff and birthdays. But uh, <clears throat> being in the California Cat Crew was going to, I thought, would be the next best thing to earn Roger Clayton of Uncle Jim Ormond, one of the founders, I would be able to earn his trust and respect mm. with a reputation because he wasn't really letting people in. And he knew that certain backgrounds of the neighborhoods we was from could come with consequences. And so that's one thing he tried to do was not alienate people who come from the, you know, the different parts of the neighborhood. But, you know, sometimes it's, it's a given if they're, uh, uh, cheerleading your 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 craft and your reputation, you know. Of course, they want to come and support, you know. Right. And uh, having people skills, but that California Cat Crew it was me, Bobcat, uh, Kit Cat, um, uh, Scratch Cat, and uh, of course Bob himself, you know. So you got you know Pookie Pookie uh, and Bob was definitely. 
not right down the street from me. You know, it was a skip and a hop. You know, traveling from the '60s to the '50s. You know, we got the VNGs, they bloods. You know, and I used to walk from my hood through their hood to get to Bob. You know what I'm saying? Because his professional approach and hunger and passion for DJing was at an all time high. I mean, uh. and and uh, that that was the closest guy I could get to. To to you know to to be able to hand this message over to Egyptian lover and Roger and say, hey, I got a little you know, a little homie, you know he's he's on time, he dressed right, his records is up to date, and he know how to play. I put him on, I gave him a platform to play, and he didn't run the audience, you know, and the fan, you know, or whatnot, you know, off the floor. He kept them on the dance floor. His transition and timing. Was, was superb because that's one thing about the art of DJing. You still had had to represent in a way where you look like business, you look like a DJ, and you look like you come to captivate, you know, a, 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 a invitation to a club or a concert. So that that helped me tremendously to be up under his 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 crew, and it gave me so much game because we end up going. I end up going to, to the same high school that he went to. Where I could see him hands on, and when I seen him play with Egyptian Lover and Roger, it was, it was, it was incredible, you know, because we got principals, grown adults there, janitors, you know, that new Bob. So I'm watching the whole demographic and demonstration of how they had to take another look at Bob and go, you know what? This not just a fool for my the forties, cripping and acting the damn asshole. He really have a skill set that doesn't exist in the school because we didn't have that kind of academic or whatever in our class, you know, as far as DJing. But, mm -hmm. you know, it was something to appreciate. And, uh, yeah, I, I just followed his footsteps. I feel, I feel you. Shout out to my big brother, DJ Bobcat. That's Bobby Bobcat Irving. You sure, heard me? So. I, big Bob, I'm on you. I want to stay during this time period because this is important. Okay. What was the streets of LA like? Because because one thing about Los Angeles, one thing about music. Period. Music pretty much mirrors the community. Mm. What's going on in the community at that mm. time? What was the streets of LA like during that time? We can all y'all can all elaborate on that. Um. Man, during that. Uh, go ahead, Gate. During the fucking. What years? We talking about like no 89, 89, 88. Well, I'm well, talking about eighty five through like yeah eighty eight. Let's stay at eighty five. Eighty five through eighty eight. The streets yeah. was vicious. Um, gang banging was vicious. Uh, drive by mu drive by was at an I mean shit niggas was getting smoked like every yeah. every day. I mean especially in Compton, I know niggas was shoot crazy. So the music to me. Um, Man, it was all Parliament and George Clinton and and you know the rap rap for us was kind of off, man. I mean, hood niggas was used listening to more bounce and motherfucking. I heard it through the grapevine. And, 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 well, that yeah. was the gangster rap. That was I mean, before rap. Was, that was kind of like the music. That was, was the, and then you know you had like you said we had Egyptian Lover. We had L.A. Dream Team, Bobby Jimmy and the Critters and yeah, shit like yeah, that. Yeah. Our rap didn't show neighborhood substance until Todd and Spade came with the TDK tapes. Yeah, yeah. And they, yeah. Started, they started doing the parodies off of, like, you know, Weird Al Yankovic would do. He would take motherfuckers' music and make his own songs. So thus we had to bat around off the rapping Duke. Yeah. We had motherfucking yeah. the clucks come out at night off of Houdini's Freaks Ooh, come out at bro. night. He breaking that uh, shit down. You know. He right. We, we had motherfucking, you know, Just Say No and Spade with the Compton Posse and, and – uh, rapping off the genius of love and exactly, shit like and that. Exactly, reverb. Um, yes, sir. That was our introduction to to neighborhood rap. You're right. Our introduction to niggas selling dope, you know, in the neighborhoods. Our introduction to the Bataram and Daryl Gates and the fucked up LAPD and Mayor Tom Bradley and all that shit. That's right. where I learned about all that shit, listening to Todd tapes. Because yeah. they talked about all that shit. Shit that wasn't being broadcasted or seen they was giving you the information about what was going on in the neighborhood. So that was my introduction to yeah. shit. 
Todd, need to, Todd, you need to bring your ass up here. Todd, the homie. Shout out to the homie, Toddy T. All day. Uh, another another legend, Todd's yes, ass. He lucky. Yes. That's, he, the, that's yeah. with that transition, we started getting the banging on wax. And yeah, the battle yeah. cat and them came yeah, along yeah. with my nigga Domino and all right. that shit. You, you that's going, what, you that's, through it. That's, through. That was, thus, that was our era of music. It started it, it, to transition. It, I, like, I, I like how you put that because it's, all I could do is just give you the west side of South Central perspective. It was that and then some because uh, the record stores and the DJs uh, existed existed uh, a lot in a lot of the South Central areas. Mm-hmm. We had the Sloss and the Western DJ booth down the street, from, uh, right across the street from the uh, Sloss and Swap Meet. Um, we had, uh, even in Gardena, it was a couple of other uh, locations where we were uh, a lot of the DJs or homies from the streets will actually go to these VIP and record stores to go get their uh, to go get their music. But then the mixtape game for us uh, paid off because I was able to start hearing other different neighborhoods uh, uh, farther from me. You know what I'm saying? Like Compton and Long Beach and and Garden. I started hearing people's uh, expressions of their experiences of life through music. I was, all them tapes was coming across, and you know, which kind of prepared me for Banging on Wax, you know, because you had Quick making his mixtapes, mm-hmm. and, 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 and it was Crips actually playing his tapes. I didn't hear it from the blood. That was another thing. They ignored what, you know, wasn't accustomed to their ears because of the where, where they was from, but they saw his gift beyond that and so when I, I just incorporated all what was happening in the streets and it just groomed me. So when Teddy, uh, not Teddy, but the homie uh, Tweety Bird from Compton and uh, my other boy, Red, Red Rum, mm-hmm. you know, from uh, from Inglewood, you know, when them two came together with that unique idea to start voicing uh, the big homies who was more in depth with uh, the real things that was happening without giving too much, uh, you know, right. insight. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they they was very good with talking about the la- light layers or the first layers of the gritty the grittiness of Crippin' and Blood and 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 uh, 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 trials and tribulations and adversities of broken homes and the police and the whole right. nine yards. So it groomed me and it, and it prepared me for that and. Um, I think Leon Haywood and, and, a, and a couple other individuals for that opportunity because I didn't see that coming. That was like a a shock a shock value to my to my craft. And you know what, what I'm saying? gonna do, Battle Cat, before you go on it, because you on a whole nother subject now. Because yeah. I was gonna speak on banging on wax. Yeah, it's connected to all that. Yeah. All that when he when he say '88, mm-hmm. it, it's. It, it got mm-hmm. close. It got real super close. That's the only reason why I gave you that gem. Like yeah, that. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell y'all out there for y'all youngsters to go do y'all research. And for the OGs to know to know, mm-hmm. when Banging on Wax hit, it was like a atomic bomb in the streets that hit. Because you for the first time, you had every car that you heard go by, whether they was a blood or a crip, or a crip mm-hmm. they was playing the same music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it kind of brought something. And, and um, that album went go. Yeah, it really, a lot, a lot it of really did. Yeah, it went it gold really with did. no radio play. It, it yeah. went gold. You're right. You're and right. You, you know you know how scandalous shit was back then. If it went gold here in the United States, you know they probably sold because West Coast music, especially back then at that time, mm-hmm. anything West Coast, you go to Japan, it was on. We was out there getting, we took as Big A. We took, we took Daz out there. We took, me and Koki took Daz and Glasses out there. They first time to Japan. And we was out there selling CDs for one hundred and fifty dollars, dog. One hundred fifty dollars. Wow. So ain't no telling what they sold out there. But I, not to cut you off, because I want to get no, no, back no. to it. I, I just As wanted to should. drop the significance of that. Yes. Of that, of that CD. Carry on. As you should. Um, excuse me. But um, you know when that happened, you know, it was some question marks definitely going across my head because I know these. It's a it's a G code, and how much information is going to be, you know, expressed over this music, and the thing about it was, if we could change the narrative, we had to do it first by keeping it raw, 
and express why this attitude, why this language, why this lifestyle and culture is like it is. Uh, and definitely it come from poverty stricken mm-hmm. in those situations or, or father not there or, or mother not there and, and the block hugging you and this is what they're, you know, adolescent or rules or uh, lifestyle is going to be. So, <clears throat> but if the thing was is that let's just embrace it. So it felt weird to to perpetuate the genocide aspect of it, meaning what we seen and what we talk and what we lived on the streets is now but to be amplified ten times more because. It's another thing, you know how it is, you take a song, you put your own spin on it, but now we're doing a video, mm-hmm. and now we're putting it on cassette with distribution and a corporation behind this culture. It's fit to be looked at all kind of ways. So I had to find a name for myself, and it was Sea Rider. I'm more of a rider than a banger. I, I knew better. You know, and um, I really wanted to be that for uh, numerous of reasons because I didn't want to uh, tarnish a real name that I earned uh, through some heroes in the, in, in, in the music industry. Right. And that was Battle Cat. I didn't want to be Battle Cat from 60s. I wanted to be Sea Riders from 60s. So when people see that, they're going to have their own spin and perspective. Oh, kid from out of the 60s or over there from the 60s, it's okay. Because one thing I wanted to do was make sure that my own identity personally and professionally was was embraced. Like, that's one thing I did love about, I still do about uh, the G's from my hood. They, they, uh, they let me be me. And uh, that was a beautiful thing to have that so I could... Uh, bring that into making the record. But at first, you know, and you know how it is in the pen, if you going to take a a, a, a a name that is not on the platform of music and not appreciated at, at all, and you, and, you, and, you, and you say Rolling 60 or RSC, who is this dude that's representing us and when would he win? So it got to the top that, hey, this, this, it's a nigga perpetrating us and then when they found out I was off the AGC and it was actually me and my reasons is because wasn't no one from my hood really rapping but we had a big homie from my hood who had a brother named uh, Bandit uh, uh, he was he was real good in the art of rapping but he went and did time so I didn't have no one from my hood to be a voice so that's when I became that artist for that movement and the success of it was to really, like, like when it got to Ghetto Boy, I mean, not Ghetto Boy, but I would say, yeah, the Ghetto Boys or what the chronic was, I was looking for the maturity of Crippin' and Bloodin' to go to another level where we're now not talking about knocking each other off, off right. because we already got cousins, brothers, sisters, wives, husband from, you know, from that perspective going into it. So... And then I was looking at it being another opportunity to introduce different other barrels or ghettos or tribes to another neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Because in the art of DJing, that's, I always had to dress neutral and make sure that whoever I was bringing with me had an open mind and, and didn't bring fear to the table by going with me to these different neighborhoods. So that was my contribution to wanting to do this thing called Banging on Wax so we can uh, re-educate people and uh, and get people to know who's who. Because if you ever go by, go across Car- uh, Compton, mm-hmm. you know you. I didn't have no one until I actually did bang on, bang in the wax. It was I was able to get someone to help me identify what was the lifestyle or, or the language or culture of of, of Compton, mm. and um, so and that I, helped me tremendously. I thought banging on wax when I listened to it, it was. Us banging against them, yeah, it definitely was doing that. them, yes. and the Crips doing them. Mm-hmm. But the way you putting it is like trying to change it through music, yeah, um, yeah. to get a, put a different spin on it through yeah. music. And I didn't look at it by listening to, uh, yeah, when we first did, it. Yeah. yeah, I didn't look at it like that. 
Like they trying to change something. Like like, but it was just raw. Now let me let me. I'm glad you jumped in to say that, because see, for me, that's why a domino came out of it. Right. Mm-hmm. You feel me? We. I don't want. I didn't want us to be looked at as just that, mm-hmm. because if you take the pillars of it off, you got some incredible human beings and we ain't always looked at as a fucking animal so why Mm -hmm. look at that image as a career right see because a lot of those brothers wasn't really active or shot callers from they from their hood right they were just being in a sense like what 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 what, 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 um uh, uh cube in a sense, was a messenger right. and a voice for the neighborhood. For the neighborhood, and not really an active member like me. I wasn't an active member. Dre wasn't an active member. You know, so a lot of us in this game, we not active members, but we hella connected, understanding the culture, the Y'all movement. Had some hard ears in that motherfucker. Though. <laughs> Come on now. I mean, but listen, I ain't gonna say. I'm not gonna say that that didn't exist. Right. You know, but. Um, that was my intent because But it worked though. Yeah, that was my intent. And and and, and it worked in, 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 in more ways than one. Because I wasn't there to change no one, but it would have been incredible to hear what, if the second one had to be that same level of, you know, dissing each other, I still wanted the 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 the, the conversation to open up to show some maturity from both both sides. Exactly. And you know exactly. what I'm saying? And so when you do that, then people can go and say, okay, that's that's their story, and they really who they are, but they really human beings underneath all that. Because we're dealing with the, the mayors, the government, we're dealing with police, we're dealing with sheriffs, we're dealing with judge. You know, when they heard that music, they just like, oh, shit, they going wild. They they, right. they, they not for to become nothing out of this shit. So don't you think a, 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 another y'all should do this again because – now and everything is different than the eighties, the nineties, with with all this shit that's going on today, yes, and sir. and gang members crossing over, yes. you know, able to sit at the table with each other, yes. mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, from yes. all walks of sides. Yes. Now here we are on some total different shit. Now yes. we can speak that, man. If I didn't know this brother from 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 being from Tragno. Yeah. I've been fucking with him a long time ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now we can rap yeah. about that shit. You yeah, can get exactly. the bloods. Yeah. You can get them on the same page and do it. And that will be some cold shit. Big James, I think it got a lot to do with, you know, like I said, the brothers maturity. that I seen, yeah, the maturity, the brothers I seen early on in the 80s, they was crippling in blood, and they still had some morals and principles. Right. But when you got G's that are ignorant and on the dark side and changing a code, or whatever that it is, and they per- perpetuating something that doesn't bring value to the the uh, the lifestyle of crippling and blood, and then you got them going uh, in a circle. They they confused. They're like, "Come on, big homie, I see you doing good, and I see you providing this and this in front of me. But why won't you bring it all the way out across the board?" Let, in a sense, like putting the laundry on the table, the the ins and the outs of how, how to will and deal. How when 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 do I turn this off? Real easy. You know what I'm saying. And and a lot of in a lot of different neighborhoods, a lot of them didn't want to turn it off because they glorified it. You know, it wasn't. You know, I didn't. I didn't. I wouldn't privy to see those meetings. And even if I was, I know for me, I didn't want to be in the room and I'm not active and that's not my lifestyle and then I hear this and then when shit go wrong then they're looking at who was the who was all in the room when this was being talked about. Right. So I knew then early on I didn't really want that. I didn't want right. to be the the uh the uh, what what you know the title that they the, the, Yeah you didn't want to be the pawn. It's yeah the I didn't want to be the pawn and yeah exactly and it's a lot of brothers who who didn't mean to be there, but they was there because of certain things that they saw that made them comfortable to be there because they 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 wasn't safe at their own crib. They just right. felt like, well, damn, if I'm getting this love and he's giving me attention and my dad ain't here or my uncle ain't here, right. I, I want to be here. Yes, so then you got a lot of artists who get inspired to say, fuck that. I'm caught between the hard rock and, you know, and the wall, but ain't no one giving me enough 
to value what I'm thinking about. So if if that all, all those pieces not there, fuck it. I'm just gonna go all the way this way, and then you got a lot of G's that would laugh at that mm -hmm. and think it's entertainment and think it's the exactly. shit, but really you fucking up someone who could be special or brilliant or successful to to life. So so when when you when Dre was doing records like Little Ghetto Boy, I was so fucking happy because he spoke. From a perspective that the BGs or the little homies always wanted to hear was a, a, a OG take accountability for the bully shit or the destructive shit he right. he he, he exactly. uh, inspired yeah. this homie. So when he said, uh, "I'm bigger than you," what you want to do? Didn't know he had yeah, a 22, 22. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I cried like a kid because I actually seen those scenarios, and that's what? when I knew Dre was. You know, this is this is the type of shit that made everyone hug him even mm -hmm. that much more. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what was going on. Big homies was getting out of the penitentiary, yes, uh, bullying the little homies in the dice game, yeah, the taking homies. their little sags, doing all this different Man, type of shit. Jane, so when the little homies, I, I'm, I'm here to show you I'm with it. I'm here to say, I'm, I'm peep funking all day. All day. And this is what you're gonna do to me, big homie? Exactly. I ain't trying to fight you. But to fight back and for everybody else not to see you as a punk, pop, pop, pop. pop, pop That's how little ghetto boys was. Yeah, and yeah. and he told it the right way. And and how the shit actually go yeah. down. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Down. And that's why I say if you did another banging on wax and and of the of the gangsters today, mm. the concept would be way wider than what it was at the first yeah. time because now you got the older cats and the younger cats kind of linking up and they understand each other. You know what I'm saying? Because the world is really fucked up now. The hoods are not the same no more. Oh, no, it's way so different now. Once you change the concept of what it was the first time yeah. and you see what it is now, it's it's totally different. It's some it's some incredible. And, and, yeah. and, and yeah, to uh we quick can rap together and talk exactly. about this shit. Yeah, that 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 blew my mind because I actually witnessed at Snoopy's function, I think it was for his birthday or or his wife, and I seen eight and chill. And quick there, and it, it, I teared up a little bit because, you know, it's not from a soft point of view. It's just like I know them both. You know, I, you know, when we don't do nothing about it, we don't look outside the box about how to be bigger, bigger than this, these scenarios and situations. Mm -hmm. Then all leaders and shit, you know, they never get, uh, 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 get going. They never get off the ground. They never, you know. Get past the, it, it the first evolved. situation. Right. So exactly. when I seen that, mm -hmm. I was like, damn it. Then I seen chill with A, and then I seen how humble. See, this is what it what it is. When you can see, like my real name is Kevin. Battle Cat is a brand. Battle Cat can't be two people. And when you try to put human perspective with another name mm -hmm. that ain't really who you are as a person, mm -hmm. people really don't know the difference. So when you trying to turn off your brand or your name industry name it's hard to do that because you didn't really in from the gate uh separate the two and sometimes you know what the public won't allow you to separate the two because you have like instances like this like let's say for example you have eight he just said it all norm i don't mean to cut you off <laughs> oh no it's, it's I, can't be no, 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 I can't be james motherfucking mcdonald but wow. shit everybody keep Nigga, you right. Mob James. Mob exactly. James is a brand, mm -hmm. and whoop the whoop. But I'm here to beg. I'm here to beg the different. I'm James McDonald. I was born James McDonald. Yes. Mob James was a character. Yes. Mob James. I played a role in the neighborhood to be that guy. Yes. yes. I ain't that guy no more because I took myself out the neighborhood. Yeah. So yeah. why? Why should I continue to be him? And if it, I continue to be Mob James, I glorify what I did. Yeah. Exactly. And I, and yeah. I can't quit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not there no more. So man, you said it, but man, thank you. People That's just right, people though. just want it. it's just sometimes people just God, damn, don't want to get over the the fact that you can mature. It's like people want to reminisce on on that character. And like I said, I hear it every day. Why don't you rap like you did thirty years ago? How come you don't talk about the drive bys and the I'm like, dude, oh, man, I'm good, not man. on the block no more selling crack this with a good, deuce man. deuce okay. in my pocket hey. trying to you know what I'm saying? God like damn, I don't do that shit mm. anymore. Okay, so. what about this? The things we do in the neighborhood. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna just say on eight. 
the things that A did in the neighborhood and the accomplishments that he made from Track New. The little homies from Track New look up to you. They don't look at John Wayne and see John Wayne as a hero. They looking exactly. at you as being a hero. And, and the coldest part about the little homies that respect us, they don't understand the change. That's all it is. They don't understand like, don't how can it. you change. Yeah. You supposed to be, this is what I what I learned forever, to love, to forever. glorify. Like, and, then, and they don't think you're supposed to grow up. But And then at the end of the day, we all got to grow up. Yeah, exactly. As men, we got to grow up and we got to learn how to be men. But the little homies and the people in the neighborhood look at us as heroes, the only heroes they know, the only real motherfuckers they see. Mm. The only fathers that they can ever get close to is the big homie sitting there on, on, on the curb with them on the brick wall telling them, the homie, this is how you do this and this is how you do that. But, but, they I, never had that. James, let me ask you this. And he mentioned it earlier, and we all go back to this. The big homie at one point literally took the place of the father in the household, huh? Yeah. Definitely. The homies. I'm glad you said that. The you homies took. And, and, and I can say this yeah. from the hood, the homies took, not one specific, not one individual, the homies, the hood took Pop's position. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because once Pop's decided to move out of the house, now we can do what the fuck we want to do, how we want to do it. I mean, now we can have the homies, and now we can mm -hmm. do this. Now I ain't got to be questioned or told to come home. You know what I'm saying? So once Pops was gone, this is the only motherfucker that you're supposed to fear. It's Pops. Nobody in the streets. But once that was gone, these niggas is dear. This, this is easy right here. I can do the hood. And I ain't ne I've never been a follower because that's one thing I've learned. I'm not going to follow you just because. I don't hear that type of shit. No, we're going to do it this way. And if they don't want to do it this way, I learn. I know how to go my way and do my thing. But <laughs> without all of that, yeah, man. Uh, the hood became family, especially for a lot of young, a lot of young brothers who fathers wasn't in, in the household. I'm talking about being deep in the yeah. hood, and and mama say them boys ain't your friends, and and I can honestly say this: my mom's resting in peace, and since 1988 all the way up until the day she died, I took care of her, and and because I felt I owed her because I used to tell my mom shut the fuck up. These the homies, get the mm -hmm. fuck out of here. I mean, very disrespectful to my mother. And it wasn't until I went to prison when a man told me, boy, you owe your mama everything. And you're gonna learn to appreciate, if you don't appreciate now, you're gonna appreciate one day. And I appreciate my mother more than anything ever I ever did since she been gone. That's deep. Real shit. That's so, deep. But I was just that ignorant into believing that the homies had my back that the homies love me, that the homies gonna make sure everything is good. When I fuck up, they gonna be there. If I get kicked out the house, I'm at, exactly. I'm at the homie house. I got somewhere to sleep. You feel me? But then at the end of the day, it just blew me away when I found that that all of it was just a fucking game. It was a joke. Yeah, because like you said, when the father left, they put their own spin and definition and rules, but didn't understand that the people that they was putting on, you know, they wasn't built for that. They didn't think right. about the mental state of mind. They didn't think about a spirit. It is a spirit in that body. And 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 when you uh, putting your own spin on it, and it's, it's cold because they see they're caught between seeing glory and success of finances and parties and a girl getting sick on them or giving them some, some bread. Oh, you is. know, everything is not really earned and understood with some sense of rules that 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 they can use for corporate America. Right. You feel me? So what happens when that mentality come to a dead end and you turn shit, this is I I've been seeing how they brought the streets to the to the suites. It started early on. And uh like that's why I was asking earlier about when the, the big homies didn't ever teach us when to turn it off mm -hmm. and not it being looked at as being soft. Like this don't belong here because cripping the blood and it's not in corporate America. But really it is it when is. you look at the, the job description they gotta do, because a lot of them, 
that Krypton Blood had good ass jobs at uh, 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 some a, a lot of places, so they knew they had to put a suit on. I seen a few of my G's come home with suits and shit on, or janitorial outfits on, mm-hmm. or some shit. Mm-hmm. So it was it was it was confusing in the sense, and some of it wasn't. Some of it was like, wow. Uh, looked at him this way, but you didn't know he had a responsibility outside that where right. he was still respected but not soft, but he knew when to bring the the G G hand to a certain situation because you got a lot of people in corporate America who don't have street skills, right. reality skills, and know how to talk and learn how to read body language, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's why for me, I was really fortunate and blessed to have some G's that wasn't demonic trying to pull me in. Mm-hmm. But it was challenging a lot of times, especially seeing certain homies get killed that I love that was built like that and some that wasn't built like that. Well, man, you know how that goes. Total package, dog. Just yeah. the total package. I'm, 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 I know the streets. I know how to talk this. I know how to talk and in corporate America. I know how to talk to whomever is in front of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know how to talk the street shit. I know how to talk thug shit. Total package, dog. So when you talk about the artists today, and when we, you know, I mean, RGs yeah. that built this shit, when they have to step away because that's not what they get down is, and the benefits is not there and none of that, it's still being looked at like, oh, you ain't shit, you a buster, you just left us and you won't give us no next level what it is. You know, it's because a lot of the G's did so much shit without turning it around that by the time you do want to say something that makes sense because you can see yourself in them, they just, just got a whole different outlook on life and they mentals and spirit and perspective of life is just gone, bro. Right. So, but w- the thing is, I'm understanding that I see eight. Hey, everyone is here. It's just grab a few. You ain't gonna be able to get them all. Right. But the ones who want it, get them. Make a difference. And that and and the, and the rest is gonna do what it's gonna do. Cause and in that know, good book, it's the same way. Everybody ain't going. Battle Cat, I can honestly say, mm-hmm. I'm I'm trying like a mug to grab all the ones I can and help all the ones I can. Wow. And yes, going can tell you, I've been doing it. Wow. Uh, I ain't even want to bring that up, but I had a cat that really felt like he didn't want to be here no more. I had to call Norm. I, me in the position I'm in, and it's easy to talk to somebody. What if I say something fucked up? Now it's on a different level. And I talked to his, well, his uncle prayed for me. Once his uncle said that prayer for me, he blessed my words to, to come out of my mouth. For this man to receive it. That's what I asked for. Oh wow. And it was it was good. And wow. not only him, but a quite a other few. I had a brother send me a picture of his son with a with a cap on. He graduated. And he said, Because of you, my son graduated. Jeez. And I didn't bury him. That I know I'm I'm doing yeah. good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. just like you say, we, we can't take everybody because everybody don't yeah, want to go. Not. They not. They gotta uh a calling that's beyond our control because of what they feel that's important that they want to stand on. They merit, they they rules, they go, they see something totally different. So all you can do is, you know, be there for them, but don't totally alienate yourself from them because you'll be so you'll be surprised. Another over talking with James, you'll be surprised what your 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 influence or another period of time in your life where right. you, you're going to play something that you can't even imagine or you really, you know you have something about yourself, but you never know you're going to play this role. So when you start to look at life on a whole nother spectrum, a whole nother frequency, a whole nother purpose than, the, the, than, than what you've been doing, it's amazing to see who are the faces when this Miraculous thing happened, or this miracle thing happened. I, I didn't been, in, I didn't been in some crazy things, wow. like how should I say this? I was very instrumental in conveying the message 
for Mr. Harris, Harry O. Mm -hmm. But me being who I am as a producer and the man and the father and the husband, I never thought that my input and my tone of voice and everything about me would help someone else take it serious and do their part to make sure that this message got you know, delivered and, and it had an effect on him coming home. Right. Hey Amen. God is good all you know the time. You know, and let me ask you this, because we're talking about helping people, right? Yes. And this, you can answer this too, A. You can answer this, James, because we all kind of feel it. You know, being people, anytime you get in the public eye, how do you tell? Because one thing about the homies, you could tell them, yeah, 50 million times. But the one time you say no, they forget about them other 50 million times. When do you eventually just say, when do you eventually cut it off? You know, I think what it is when you, for me, um, if your support and your contribution to saying something to them, I guess when they, they see it as, like Dracula, you know, he, he can't stand the light. You, you feel me? So when you see them like, wanting to be real dark and don't want to value you on a whole nother level where they talking to you in a very disrespectful way. Like you're supposed to do something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then, then then you just got to just smile and go, okay, that's where he that's where he at. It ain't going to make you weak. It's, you know, you're a king. You're a man if you can really pay attention to knowing that, you know what, even if he's disrespecting me in front of others that respect me, I still know the difference without being looked at as a weenie. Or well, we don't punk, in those situations. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I know mm -hmm. I know how to walk away and just smile about it and go on, but some people feel like if they're in front of their peers and, and you trying to give someone something, you know, and the, 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 the little homie or whatever, you know, act like he want to get off on you because he don't feel he, nothing about you. He just, was for some reason the day, you just, you was the straw that broke the camel's back. You know what I'm saying? And, and you in front of your peers when this is happening. Sometimes, you know, some guys got to just go there, but it really don't, it doesn't answer the situation. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, I hope I'm, I'm hope I'm getting to it. You know, I just know when, the, I, I've been in situations like that. I just know, you know, when we I see have. it and it's overbearing mm -hmm. and it's going to take you, it's about to take you out of character and you feel like, you know, You said the key thing, you know, you got to just sit back and just smile sometimes. Yeah, when I just smile. Because I mean, I, the first thing a motherfucker going to do is tell you if they really know you and know the type of person you are. First thing they're going to do is going to tell you, man, don't trip off that shit. Yeah. I mean, because if you are that changed person that a motherfucker has seen, then no. Because if they know what you come from, they respect you more for being that motherfucker who yeah, can go just yeah, smile yeah. and be like, yeah, you know something? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It shows that you have changed your character and not that motherfucker, you get me? Yeah. And a lot of maturity comes with that from yeah, people. Yeah. They respect you more well, a I little bit. I must be hanging around the wrong motherfuckers because motherfuckers <laughs> is taking my kindness for weakness. <laughs> and I'm telling y'all right now on Gangsta Chronicles, I ain't appreciating that shit, and I'm gonna slap the fuck out of one of you motherfuckers that keep playing with James. Fuck Mob James, I keep telling y'all that. But mess with James. James McDonald gonna slap the shit out your ass. And you know what I think that is for me? When I hear you reach out like that, you know what I'm saying? I'm not one to just laugh and stay to the side and like say that's James. I think for me, when I hear you speak like that, it just say, just remove yourself. Stay in the lane that you've been in. Right. And because it don't matter if you got a good thing or a bad thing, they still gonna say fuck. Right. Fuck mm -hmm. James. Right. Because we seeing that. Well, Pac that's not here, Biggie, or anyone who's been here, uh, Nipsey, the whole nine yards, you know. So it's like, um, it's almost like giving them a sense, you're giving them power that it touches you that much right. and that words can affect you, you know. Um, and I ain't going to say that's that make you soft at all because it touched you because, see, really you have a heart. And you really just want them to look at the light of what you then put out and what it and, and, and the benefits that can come with it. Right. So for those who is on the opposite, it is what it is. It's like them showing you they left from their right. Okay, cool. That's where you at. 
good. I didn't have to spend a lot of time with you to find out that's where you at and that's that's what you want. Good. Now I have the upper hand and how to move for my divine order in life, like how you are today. I didn't know what it take for James, Big James, to get here. But whatever James did, he Big didn't James. value the op, the opposite. He didn't give a he didn't give life life to it at all enough right. to get here. So I salute you for whatever process you had to and take to get here. That. And that's, that. and that's the thing, man. You know what? I look at it like this. I don't give my emotions to somebody I don't care about. If you sitting up here telling me, that's you know, you feed me this, I'm just go. Now, if me and this man have a disagreement, that's going to bother me because he's a friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. If he, me and him have a disagreement, that's going to bother me. If me and you have a disagreement, yeah. if I'm in the wrong, I'm going to reach out and apologize about it. But yeah. if there's somebody that's not edifying to me or whatever, it's like, good, I'm glad you're showing your ass now. That way I don't have to mess with you at all. I try to prove and show everybody that I am human and there's multiple sides to all of us. Regardless if I denounce Mob James, uh, James McDonald still carries some of those traits that dude had. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which is I can go from zero to 100 and minute. be violent at any time because that's something I learned in the hood, in the streets. I know how to do that. So and I can't throw that away. So that's one. Exactly. Of, it's a part of who that's you are. A, that's very valuable to me. Mm -hmm. But just being on a different level, you know, I thought people should would appreciate the fact that I'm not there. I'm not in the street being self destruction, self destructive. But I'm I'm sitting at, at a table talking to men, you know, on mm -hmm. some productive shit. Yeah. You know, teaching these young cats that we don't have to be fools. And stupid and ignorant, we can we can grow up at 14. We can learn the difference and know the difference at 14, 15 years old. We don't have to wait and say, if I knew what I know now at the age of 35, mm -hmm. if I knew what I knew then at 15, mm -hmm. 16, I'd have been a better person. That's funny that you I said that, never did James. That. Because see, it's you, hey, you, you. We all know the demonstration is in front of the world. Right. And they, and it should be enough to see the do's and the don'ts. Right. But because they doesn't they do, I guess they don't see enough for them to want to be right and appreciate that that they saw then they feel it's 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 only peer pressure if you weak. That's right. what I look right. I'm looking at it. It's right. only peer pressure when you don't really want to value anything that's going to take you and yours to that next level. Right. So and we seen that before us. It's a choice at the end of the day, in the beginning of the day. That's where you at. That's cool. Uh, if I come and see you, I see you. But don't be mad if I'm not there. But then I learn not even to tell them that because they're gonna do whatever they want to do regardless. But my thing is, is learning not to put myself in a situation where I have to be approached. Mm -hmm. right. You know, if I want that serenity and peace, I know where not to be. And sometimes it's just hard because when you come from a place where you love, you it's almost like you you become a fucking a uh, 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 tourist. Now you're going to visit where you used to be, and mm -hmm. and, and damn a motherfucker that's got to say something about it. Right. But I'm learning a lot. Just let it be. If there's nothing there, your mama ain't there, your auntie, your brother ain't there. Don't go. I don't. Fuck I don't it. have no reason. To go let it be I because you the mink should inherit the earth. It can't be just. The block of track knew where I started at. If I got a passport, if I got folks who I know that got property and and a different mm -hmm. life overseas, then how is my only uh, purpose is just to be right here? Right. Yeah, it's exactly. real. You're supposed to elevate and grow. Yes. Gotcha. That's being a grown man. Elevate being a grown and because grow. there's no benefits. We don't know a lot of people who are really winning. Yeah, this is our inner city where we come from, but people really have to understand uh, the other agenda at hand, politics, everything. They they didn't want us out. Okay, well, the ones that want to be here and you want to buy up the block, it's a certain thing that has to go on and you have to really know yourself and you really got to know the people that's in your community and really try to help provide something where they are really strong mentally, physically, the whole nine yards, mm -hmm. so they can maintain. Exactly. If we conceiving kids and bringing them into the earth, I know mines, all the mines, they 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 love where they come from, but they want to get out. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that 
I seen that them you know, that in them when they turn the television on, looking at geographical channels, looking at mechanics and the other different shit that these mm-hmm. networks provided, and then seeing that damn oh that's just what they 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 passion is. Well shit, if this music shit don't go all the way, then I'm gonna take the best of what I do got and put that in them and just live with them and live through them. Exactly. Yeah, for real. I'm, I'm gonna do that then, and that's why I admire those who. Step outside the box, you know. You know, Snoop is one of them. I mean, I see him creating jobs and opportunities from different walks of life. Um, only, only, I have to say the entertainment aspect of who these people are is because I didn't see it with my own eyes. It's not because right. I'm friends with them. It's just the, the stuff that come across my radar. Oh man, I'm gonna without tell even you, asking. Exactly. And I'm gonna tell you with Snoop, man. No, you can't come up to Snoop on no Snoop Dogg shit or eight on no, on no MC8 shit when they out there on the football field with them kids. You will fuck around and get rolled up out that motherfucker. Exactly. This is this is a this is this is a man that now this now, this is what I'm talking about, James. Now we seeing like the platform that you have right here. I never heard and never seen your voice until the day that that you decided to bring James to this platform. Right. And it was very very intriguing to hear G's from that perspective, right or wrong, because you hear so much talk, I don't hear no one trying to challenge you and say that these things is not solid and not real. I, I, and then it goes hand in hand. If your lifestyle, meaning the fruits of your labor is solid and consistent and you bearing the fruits of what you putting into it now, who in the hell is going to doubt that? Right. Now, they don't have no weight. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's another thing that made me respect, you know, Gangster Chronicles. You know what I'm saying? Because it's heroes that, that are gangsters. That's been killers. Right. That's been murderers. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't condone all this, the, the circumstances of it, but it's just amazing because when you look at that good book and it's it's killing and has been some kind of way rewarded. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you doing it for righteousness, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's not to be glorified, but you know, just like when we be, when we watch certain Italians and they got a bad blood that's fucking up the organization and, and the structure of how it is, and then they gotta go grab one of the members and send him off and knock him off. You know, we kind of. Embrace that, but it got taken the wrong way. It's another way where they can live. We, we, it's like it's like if we could use that power that's so hard and so dark and, and demonic, um, demonic, and 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 say, nigga, you going to school today, nigga? You for to learn something, or you for to get beat the fuck up? I never had, I never seen enough of that perspective. Right. Like taking right. that power right. and saying, no, nah, nigga, nigga, you gonna dress right today, nigga. Or you can't even be from the set. That'd Everything be, no, that, that we did on the opposite. Right yeah, exactly. so now, now we talking about some, some gritty shit. Right. Mm-hmm. Now right. we can do yeah. that. We can do that. We If we want to bring the upper echelons of our hood that we love so much, well, well, you know how what goes with that. You know you're gonna be. It's gonna be some rebelliousness, and it's gonna be possibly some darkness and some and killing. See, and it, and it, see, I'm gonna tell I, you something. What he's saying is powerful because what we're doing right here, technically, right, ain't though. supposed to be popular. You know what's supposed to be popular? We supposed to be on here dissing somebody, dissing like or talking about somebody. Be nine times bigger. Than you know what I'm saying? It'll be nine I mean, it times is. bigger. So exactly. we we kind of have the amount of people listening to this show every week that we have is actually amazing. It shows that people still want to hear real shit. Because my thing is this: I have brothers sometimes inbox me. Oh man, I know this about such and such. I know this about such because we not here to. Put down no other person. Yeah, we, 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 we're not we, here we to just talk like about no other man. What 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 America is doing? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. not we'll be nature. just one of them. We couldn't then we couldn't say shit. We our better not have it in our records. Lift motherfuckers who have a struggle. No, you get me? It's, 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 me? Our thing is to uplift niggas who have been through the struggle and who've been through those those transitions of changing themselves. Like like James said, I'm not Miles James no more. I'm James McDonald. So respect that transition of who I am. Now you just think about the last time Snoop seen this man 
you was at the Snoop trial. Dogg trial. Yeah, you was at the trial with him. So just imagine that transition. If somebody would have came in both of their ears back then and say, "Hey, man, Snoop, Mob James, Mob James could have a podcast one day," he'd have been like, "What the hell?" Not that thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and just think about like, not that And you would have told Snoop back then, "Hey, man, you gonna be the biggest rapper, the most recognized rapper in the world one day." They both would have been like, "Man, what is Snoop talking about? Is he on dope or something?" Look at it though, man. That's the way the universe works. It's funny that you said it, and, I, and a lot of people have a lot of complaints about why artists are magnified and big like they are, or whatever. It's only temporary, but one thing I do admire about them, they believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. Even if the shit is off and it, it don't make a lot of sense, mm -hmm. it's still the word integrity. integrity, it's still trust, it's still confidence, it's still something. They turned that into something. Now, the content is another thing. Like I was, I remember what Dre was saying. Like, look, I, I get it what the content is. That's because he lived it too. This and bitches, orgies, the whole nine yards. He, he didn't done it already. But he wants some shit with some substance. Mm -hmm. And to him, that's what longevity is. Because mm -hmm. we really ain't doing a service to the people we say we Preach. grew up on. Preach. We ain't, uh, if you say you grew up on the Al Greens and the Curtis Man and the Donny Hathaways and the uh, 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 or even the Parliament, I mean, listen, even with the funk, at least Roger was saying on So Rough, So Tough, don't worry about your troubles, just get on down. Mm -hmm. right. So it's always been a message with the funk. That's why I gravitated to the funk. They wasn't talking about no genocide and fucking their own homie up and taking their own bitches or wives and cousins and nieces mm -hmm. and daughters. They wasn't doing that with the music. So I know they had so many challenges and like, damn, look, listen to this content. But then we need the money. You know, I'm pretty sure Legends has been in those, in those kind of scenarios and had to allow it to go. But the ones that didn't clear it, I understand it's because if you can do us as a people, this is our skin, this is us. Exactly. So why are we going to de de depreciate all this great message and music that they did? So once you change to perspective, that's like when, when you did growing up in the hood over more bounce to the ounce. It was like, come on, man. I, we loved it. I, everything mm -hmm. that you brought to the table, all you did was give us a perspective from Compton how women can be how niggas can be, what was challenging, and how you got through it. That's why I don't like to hear a song where it's the first and second, third verse. It's like, can we get a song where if you if you come from a dark place, speak on it. Now, what was the the changing point? That could be exactly. the second verse. Mm -hmm. Okay, the third verse is another perspective you got, so you don't have to continue. To be where you movie. was on on, yeah. on the first verse. That's what we got to do it now. Don't do a whole song where you just this nigga did me wrong and and I fucked him over and this and this and that. He got to me. You okay? You let your guards down. Can you take accountability? Can you say in that verse that I understand now why that energy was in my circle because I allowed it. My perspective right. of perception about him was 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 cloudy. I put my own spin on what I thought this relationship was. Yeah, he gave me the body language like he was with it and he understood me and then we departed from each other, but really, he didn't look at it like I did. He just got along to get along, but really he had a hidden agenda. Right. So what is that called? You know, and what are those titles? You got comrades, you got, uh, uh, you got, uh, you know, uh, all those different, Titles, uh, uh, a confidant, you mm. know, you know, it, it really make you want to pick up a book and go back and look at the true definition of what the words is, so you can understand, you can understand the body language when you see it without putting your emotions all the time on the front line with things. But if we gonna go on our own understanding and putting definitions into words that don't really mean anything, right. then you can't be mad at the person on the other end that is is gonna you know not really get where you're coming from right. because you really you, you they access has got to show that they really can can appreciate and they understood where you was coming from that's, that's what talk. i'm gonna say in the and next I, and i got Real one shit. and i got one question one more question for you bro and i appreciate you being here with us this long you've been working with dr drake for over 25 years right 
Yeah, it's personally and professionally. Personally and professionally, right. What is it about him? I know what it is. I got an idea of what it is, but what is it do you think about him that makes him so special above you know, that upper echelon of hip hop? I would take the special out. Even though I looked at the definition of what it is, I think the special part, though, if I had to keep it in there, knowing what the definition is, is when he's not thinking for self and he's uh, unpredictable in how he wants to give with no intentions. Mm. That's the special part. Then the other part is he's not I wasn't raised with him. So I have to have an open mind every time I come across him and it's always positive energy. I think what it is with, with my bro is if you bring something to the table and you put it in you put it in that circle into a conversation, you really have to be about it, know about it and bring the history of how relevant and powerful it is that you're putting, meaning information in his in his presence. Right. Because if you're saying some shit that can't stand the test of time, let alone for yourself, and it's not, and it's, it, you know, how could you put this into his his presence like it, it holds value, you know? So know what you're saying, and and live what you you know what you know. You know, and so if you don't, then he's not really enthused. That's with it. You know, he, he, it's a turn off. And that's why it's he gives you a little energy. ghetto boy. Yeah, yeah, it's bad that's energy. Why he he out of there. That's why you get a little ghetto boy because he was so detailed and so descriptive with it. It's like you watching the movie when you listen to some of them songs. Listen, I, I admire the fact that, you know, your ego and pride can act like I'm with this that I don't come from. But once you recognize that it's not your cup of tea and that's really not how you made up and now you're tired of manifesting that personality or vibe or whatnot, you know, when you don't uh, find, when you don't find a way, you know, I guess with Dre, like I don't, I'm not, he, he's not going to do a lot of uh, explaining why this and why that and why this unless it's something about you where he will bring something special to the table or something personal from the table, or you know, from his perspective, where cat, this and this and this and this happened, and this is why I was inspired, or this is why I did this. I get those gems every once in a while without having a long conversation. It's just the right energy and the right situation. You'd be surprised how it's going to come out, and if he feel in his heart that you trustworthy, I think because you know he he's in his own lane, but you know. You know how it is. Like I don't see eight all the time. I don't see mm -hmm. James all the time. But the, but whatever you're doing to not be on the fucked up radar says a lot. Exactly. Yeah. About how I could confine in you, right? And give you a jewel or two. And that that's that's kind of like what I see with him right now. He just he's still fine tuning him. Right. Just because you successful don't mean you still. Oh, you do with learning. Oh, exactly. you do with going through and shit. I think he was he was smart enough. To walk away from certain things in his life, like you said, he knew wasn't right. Yeah. He he got to that point where he had to think about. At the beginning, it's all good because this 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 platform this this printout that you put in front of me sound like we finna make a we finna we we there. So you you drew out the right shit. But then at the end of the day, when I see your true colors, I see what shit is. Damn, is this really for me? Yeah. Is this the kind of shit I want to be brought yeah, in? Yeah. I'm he going down with the goddamn ship. I mm. don't want to be a part of this ship. And 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 because he want to be a human being. Yeah. Without see, saying the ego, names. The ego, the ego and pride. The ego and pride is thrown out the window. Going because places. Because if he was with that, he still would have been with the, the dumb shit. Right. I can give you an example, and I, and I can say that because I'm just I'm just saying it from a consumer point of view. Just like when uh, at the Source Awards, I seen how the audience was of that entourage was responding when he said what he had to say. Yeah, a few that could and should or would spoke their perspective about damn. I didn't understand what it was and why it had to be that when I heard 
the young man, I mean, you know, the brother said what he said on the stage, you know, they didn't know that was going to come with it. They thought he was going to get his award and go a different route. Right. So when that was said, and then I watched the cameras be put on the entourage, I've seen what that is. And it's not me judging. We know what that is. Right. It's pride. It's, mm -hmm. it's it's funny. It's it's the same shit what I was saying with the gang bang, you know, the same thing. When we don't want to point it out, ain't no men in the room. Everybody right. just going to roll. Exactly. Because if it's an expression being seen, like you, you don't you don't like that, and you, and you got something to say about it, then you 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 fit to be done in a way you can't even imagine. You know what yeah. kind of shit is that? Yeah. You know, and and and, and, and and in corporate America or just as a people, we we looked at like, damn, where's the values? Who's exactly. a man? Who's a stand up guy? Is it? And, and somebody got to be. That's just the whole point. That part. So exactly. imagine how many years that was, and the and the and the, and the first man we seen that needed to, had to be a man was Andre Young, mm -hmm. and I heard he was in an easy situation when he, when he made his decision, but he survived. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand that man is a uh, is a big brother to me because the OGs of. And big brothers of this music game, and as a producer, is the slips, is the pools, mm -hmm. is the Dre's, is the Egyptian lover, is the Bobcat, and is the L.A. Posse. L.A. Posse did LL Cool J shit. Exactly. That's Dur yep. Muffler, Duro, yep. Pool, and and Bob. Yep. And them niggas is still here to this day, and they got a better perspective for life. Still got All bangers. Of them. So. When I could have been encouraged to go the same way exactly where Dre was going when I seen him doing all that. I was just like, I couldn't judge. And I didn't gossip like a bitch talking about my perspective or my appreciation that I had for him. And then I seen this and then this ain't him. That's one thing I learned is to keep my perspective to myself. Now, mm -hmm. I did have loose lips, but thank God it didn't sink, sink my boat. Right. You know what I'm saying? I have to say that. I had to look at it a different perspective because someone can take what I say, and if they got a strong enough reputation with the person that I love, they can go and turn that turn that shit around, and then next thing you know, he ain't feeling me. But one thing I do know, man, no man is my savior. You know what I'm saying? You not my mm -hmm. God. You know, if I bring something life altering and disrespectful where you feel like you got to take me out and I was the cause of it, mm -hmm. so be it. But if it's not, I am really ain't going to feel you, fear you for shit. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. Hey, you know, and that's one thing I think it is with Dre, just to sum it up. He can't stand yes sir, no sir niggas. And, he, and you might get talked to in the way if you don't know what you're talking about that way. You know what I'm saying? Because if you study someone outside looking in, it should be enough for you to go, you know what? I only need to bring what is needed in this in this room if I get a phone call or if I come across the path. You know what I'm saying? Just do that and keep it pushing. Other than that, don't be having a question mark really with him like that. It's called divine order. So only thing I bring to anyone eight y'all when I see y'all is that just like when I pulled up with him. I, my personality and my vibe was so free spirit. That's the first thing I say is, shit, I'm here. I ain't finna let y'all put an APB on me. That was a, a, an right. atonement thing or endearment daring yeah. thing to say that I appreciate the time y'all are here and y'all was sitting outside. So I'm like, damn, am I su super late? I knew I wasn't because it was 7.30. Right. Yeah, 730. Yeah, you was right on time. So, so, but I wanted to show that as a form of greeting my brothers who are really Taking time off for the individual's lives to talk with me. And as a term right. of you know respect to you, we go make sure, I always want to make sure that at least one of us is here yeah. before the guests get here, you know, so yeah. we can ask them. Yeah. And I always ask them, do you have any particular needs or wants? Do you yeah. have anything yeah. do you want? Some people might want yeah. water, you know what I'm saying? Some people might need that shit, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, you know. But that's what I love about now, besides the title of being Gangster Chronicle. I'm, I'm sitting at the table with men who are passionate with principles and morals. So that should be the new evolution of the gangsters that have a chronicle, have chronicle things to share with right. the world, you feel me? Exactly. That's what it is right there. That that's part right there. 
hit you hit it right in the head, man. Yes, but, sir. but before we go, we can't leave without you talking about this, man. Now, word on the streets is, man, that you working on the album right now, man. That's gonna be out toward the Whoa. late twenty twenty one. I heard it got some shit. And I heard you got some everybody on there, dog. So what's the news? Can we break some news on this motherfucker yeah, real quick? Yes, we can. I have a song called I'm from Round the Way. And when you look at your purpose and your gift, it's bigger than the block. And the fact that I seen early on in my career royalty statements from records being distributed and sold and played on all different platforms that you, you can never imagine. When I started seeing that I was being appreciated from South Central California and Japan, Canada, Detroit, it's like, okay, now this must be a gift that God gave me that my mother and father didn't see coming, that I would have the ability to touch the masses of the world. Now, how can I continue that? Well, first of all, I understood what this thing was. It's called hip hop. Then I understood the entertainment business. Then I understood that it's life, hardships, and good that goes with it that can really be appreciated like in the form of a movie or anything. So I said, you know what? I got to tell my story because everyone got their uh, stories about Battle Cat, but they really don't know how Battle Cat came about. So they, I need to introduce to the world through Battle Cat, who Kevin is, that helped Battle Cat become who he is, which is a voice for the unsung and heard of life, not just entertainment. So I got a single called I'm From Round The Way, cause I'm from everywhere, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, I did a, 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 a EP. I have an album and a half, but I got an EP where I think everyone is gonna be able to appreciate my story uh song is being mixed now. Um uh, the single should be out maybe uh sometime in the first two weeks of uh, of July. Um I get a chance to just give the world my perspective as a man, as a father, as a husband, as a musician, as a producer, uh and uh and and, and someone who's who's loved. You know, I even speak on the things a little bit of people not appreciate me, but one thing I did bring was accountability, so it won't be looking like I'm just trying to be bigger than someone, or you know my life was just perfect like that. No, I took the imperfection and turning it to perfection. So I ain't here to judge. I'm here to just love. I'm here to bring some good music. I'm here to finish what I started. You know, um, uh, having my brothers on the West Coast that are producers slash artists like Quick and Dre, they both been such an inspiration to us all, but they don't have to be the only two remaining that could uh, fulfill uh, being a voice for their coast in the world. So that's what I'm doing. And sure. uh, yeah, we can't. We, we, man, we damn can't sure wait. can't wait to play to some of them records because exactly. you know right. we got the radio show, man. You know. Wake your punk ass up, man! You oh, know man. that's gonna be on. That's, that's gonna be on. That's gonna be on every Friday well, like nights. That. You know, yeah. every Friday yeah, nights throughout. Every Friday night. Oh so, yeah. wow! Well, on that note, I did leave y'all. Uh, uh, I think about thirty to thirty-five minutes, if I, not forty-five minutes, of my classic hits. Uh, I just need to get your email and forward that mix. I did that before I got here. Oh, for yeah, sure. I got we so much that. shit. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to do part two, three, and yeah, four and oh, give y'all sure. my whole catalog of records and from artists independent to the majors that I, 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 I ever worked with. I never did that for anyone, but Gangster Chronicles seemed like it's one of the, the homes I can plant that seed. Yeah, yeah, y'all sure. heard it. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you one of the things we'll be doing, I promise you, I'm going to let you out of here. You know, I ain't. I got a battle cat up in there, so you know I'm spoiled right now. Right, right. right. Let's go, no, 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 Let's no, go, God tell me, so it. Time is wasted. One thing I'm going to say is this, man. We, we got to call the WYPA up for the, you know, for the thing, you know, but it's Wake Your Punk Ass Up Radio. One of the things we are going to do is you go hear those classic battle cat records, but you go hear the new heat the yeah, battle cat yeah, got, too. The we, evolution we, cause we was, of we, battle Yeah, because my yeah. thing is this. And I love the other radio stations that play the old stuff. My thing is this, eight didn't stop making records in 1998. He still got stuff that like, to me, the stuff he's putting out today is killing the stuff he used to put out. Wow. You know what I'm saying? He's making that music back then. We know what that was. It was great yeah, music. Yeah. But this new stuff is even more powerful. It's, it's in the time of where he is right now. Exactly. So yeah. that's what I want to show. Yeah. 
we plan as far as the music portion of the show that brothers are still out here active. And if you were on the West Coast and you got a home, we looking out for home first. Not oh, no, no, no official, nobody else, but we looking exactly. out for the house first. I'm with it. I was told that my age is the same, around the same time when Quincy Jones did the did the thriller. So I feel like where I'm at now, I'm in my thriller moment right now. Exactly. You I'm know what I'm saying? Show, so I got something to say. Big shout out to Stan Shepard. Big shout out to uh, Postar Entertainment. Big shout out to uh, me and wife is Get Down, New Shoes, uh, Entertainment. And um, I just got a bunch of beautiful things happening that really involve y'all too as well. So don't be don't be surprised when I I, I get to hitting y'all doorbell for something oh, that's bro, that's out that. of y'all comfort zone. But it's gonna be definitely something that I think is rewarding to such a platform called the, the Gangster Chronicles. You know, and that's one thing when you do these interviews. You know, a lot of people you know need they status quo or rep or. You know, need to be validated. I don't need none of those and above. I'm here right. to give. I I came with my with my hand uh, to bear gifts, not with my hands open looking to receive. Right. You know, so y'all already did that by creating this platform. I think uh, the world is gonna really appreciate you guys. 20, 30 years from now, from having this, because this we never had this before, and to have people for these from these authentic walks of life is just amazing. So. You know, uh, we ain't tripping on what the numbers is. They gonna climb anyway because when people get tired of the bullshit, like preachers behind the pulpit, and they want something real that's gonna stand the test of time, they gonna they gonna say, "Damn, Gangster Chronicles is it was this damn that was that was something we didn't see coming." You know, and exactly. so I'm glad we we putting y'all putting the work in and having me a part of this, man. Thank you man. again. Man, for sure. Anytime, it. man. And so wow. on that note, fellas. Another well, one. before we go out of here, man, I wanna, I wanna say, uh, I'm, you know, say a prayer for my uncle, oh, Malcolm Burdett. Yes, sir. You know, he on the hospital yes, right now, and we going through it every day with him, but we there as family. Yes. And uh, we're going to give shout outs to Monster Cody. Monster uh, Cody. Rest yes. in peace. Wow. You know, and it wouldn't be Gangster Chronicles if you didn't do that. Right. I and I got to give a shout out to my homegirl, Big Mama from Backstreet. Wow. As you right. know, she just passed away. She She's a ride or die, and I, I fuck with her big time. And uh, that was my girl. So, man, love your family while they're here. Let's not fight each other. And let's embrace each other. Yes, right. 100. Yeah. Talk, peace and positivity. We got it. Finally get a chance.